What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 176 of the Taste Cast, a weekly podcast where we talk about all things gaming. My name's Seth, and joining me today, of course, is Chevy. On my left, your right. Chevy, we haven't done Taste Cast in a little bit. Cool. Are you excited to have this conversation about a bunch of topics we got to talk about today? And uh, have you played God of War Ragnarok yet? I don't know what topics you have, so I don't know if I'm excited. But I didn't share them with you this time. Yeah. All right, it's going to be a surprise which, for everyone which, except for me. Which is fine. Um, and then I bought God of War. <laughs> I have not played it yet. So. Yeah. Even if you did, we can't really talk about it because it's our True. game of the month for November. So hopefully everybody's playing it and ready to talk about it. I hope to beat it uh, by the end of the month so I can actually do like a full review. Hopefully you'll be able to play it quite a bit by then as well. That's the plan. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, sounds good. And uh, yeah, we're going to find out what our topics are to talk about today. Uh, but first, we got to jump into game releases because this is the first Tasty Cast of November. So uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the games coming out in November and we will talk about the games that we are hyped for and not hyped for. This is via The Gamer, the list we got here. So if there's a uh, problem here, it's their fault, not mine. <laughs> And yeah, let's just jump into it, guys. So uh, November 3rd, we got How to Say Goodbye on Switch and PC. Uh, November 3rd as well, we got The Chant on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC. And then November 4th, we got Bratz, Flaunt Your Fashion. Bratz is a thing again? Uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Switch and PC. They're really trying to get everyone to play that one. Uh, November 4th, we got Harvest Stella on Switch and PC. Then also on the 4th, we got It Takes Two coming out on Switch or came out on Switch. Hopefully you guys got a chance to play that. It's a great game. I have not. Um, yeah, we'll have to play through it sometime. November 8th, we got Sonic Frontiers on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC. Then on the 8th as well, we got Football Manager 2023 on Xbox One, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC. No PlayStation? Interesting. Uh, on the 8th as well, we got Sifu on Switch. And then also on the 8th, we got Oddworld Soulstorm on Switch. God of War Ragnarok, I'm sure you guys know, came out on the 9th for PS4 and PS5. And I've been hearing a lot of people say that you can play it on the PS4 but your PS4 might take off because it's going to sound like a jet, um, which makes a lot of sense. I've uh, played it. I've seen it. November 11th, we got Valkyrie Elysium on PC. Then on the 11th as well, we got Tactics Ogre Reborn, PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC. That's been getting really good reviews. Oh, I'm sure. It's the fucking, at least the originals are the same dude who did Tactics, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah I think it was going like nines. Man. So I was like, that's crazy. But anyway, we'll talk about it. Uh, November 11th as well, we got Resident Evil 2 on Switch. Congratulations. Uh, November 15th, Pentiment on Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. And then on the 15th as well, we got Ease uh, 8, Lacrimosa of Dana. Dana, that's quite the name, on uh, PS5. And then on the 15th, we got Somerville. Uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series, PC. Then on the 17th, we get Goat Simulator 3. We skip two and we go straight to three. That is coming out on uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Then on the 18th, we got Pokemon Scarlet and Violet coming out on Switch. This is a big month for games. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's Switch. And then uh, on the 18th as well, we got the Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil in Me, coming out on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. That's already coming out. It's wild. Uh, on the 18th, we got Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales coming out on PC. Congrats, everyone, on PC. You get to play that. And then uh, Resident Evil 3 is coming out on Switch, also on the 18th. Evil West finally comes out on the 22nd. That's a video we're going to be watching today. Okay. Um, for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC. Then on the 22nd as well, we got Just Dance 2023 Edition. Uh, 2023 Edition. That's the the edition. Uh, PS5, Xbox Series, and Switch. And then on the 28th, we got World of Warcraft Dragonflight. I thought that came out already on PC. Anyone who's playing that game, I hope you're excited. I don't know what the word on that has been. Uh, on the 29th, we got The Night Witch. Uh, on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC. And then last, and definitely not least, on November 30th, we get Warhammer 40K Dark Tide on PC, made by the people who make Vermintide. Um, very excited for that. I'm just going to throw that out there now. Chevy, what games are speaking to you in November? Okay, well, it seems like it's the end of the year, and everybody's like, we got to get this shit out. Yeah, this month sucks. Yeah. Uh, not actually. It sucks time-wise. Um, True. True. <laughs> Uh, I bought Harvestella. Um, 
I don't get too into that because next segment I'll, I'll get to talk about it. So, uh, but I bought that one. Um, I'm honestly a little curious about Sonic Frontiers because it's getting good um, feedback. It's getting like sevens, yeah. Well, even like people playing it, I, I've talked to two people who have played it and they've been enjoying it. So, the thing I keep hearing confused. is it's it's a really good foundation for what they want Sonic to be. Yeah, I'm super curious. Maybe I'll wait till it goes on sale and pick it up at some point. Or when it comes out on PlayStation Plus. Which is a possibility. Yep. Um, I bought God of War Ragnarok. Have not played it yet. I am going to... Uh, I don't know when I'm going to play it, but I'm going to buy uh, Valkyrie Elysium and Tactics Ogre Reborn. Because Square apparently is just trying to destroy my free time lately. Um... I also, at some point, though, I probably won't get it this month. I'm going to have to push it back. But I would like to pick up Pokemon. I don't know which version yet, but probably Violet. Um, and I'm only basing that off the color. So. Are these, like, new mainline this Pokemon games? new gen, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I didn't fucking realize they were already pumping those out. Um, and then in about six months, we'll get the, the, the same gen, but, like, a remake of an old game. And then we'll get, the, the you know, six months after that, the next full gen. Anyways, um, I'm excited for PC players to get another Spider-Man game. Though, fun fact, my PS5 copy is still in its wrapping. Um, it actually ne- came bundled. It came with my PS5, yeah. and I never opened it to play it. So, uh, it's somewhere. Um, and I never beat that. I beat the original. super short. Yeah, I beat the original, and I loved it. But when I played this, it just kind of felt like more of the same, more of the same with yeah. different powers. Uh, and I think that is all I am looking at. This You're moment. not picking up Dark Tide, uh huh? God damn! I don't like 40k. You like Vermintide? <laughs> sure, I like fantasy. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I have not, and I want to badly. I haven't picked it up yet. I want to play Harvestella because it looks fucking awesome. The reason I haven't even humored picking it up is because I have too much on my plate right now, gaming wise. And so, uh, as much as I want to give them my money, um, it's just not the right time. So, Harvestell is definitely on my hit list. That's that's going to be something I'm going to pick up. Uh, Sonic Frontiers, I'm uh, interested in for sure. Uh, the pop in every time I watch video of it drives me insane. I think it's amateur shit looking. But uh, other than that, it looks like it's a huge plethora of all these things from Sonic that you like. It has like the 3D, the the 2D perspective stuff. It's got like Sonic spinball style stuff going on in it. So it looks like it would just be like fun for Mm -hmm. Sonic fans. Right. But it does seem kind of sloppy too. So, um, but it's been getting decent reviews, which I think is what we want from Sonic, like for for it to not suck. So um, I might might pick it up, but yeah, it might be like on sale that I'll pick it up. I'm not like super pumped on it, but, uh, you know, I grew up playing Sonic. I love Sonic, so I would like a good one. Uh, I have picked up and have played God of War Ragnarok. I will uh, slightly say some facts about it when I talk about what we've been playing, but I can't talk about it too much because it's our game of the month, yeah. so we will be doing a review of that. Uh, Valkyrie Elysium, I need to look up some stuff on, but uh, from what I did see originally, it looked cool, so I do want to pick that up. Um, and that came out already, right? And On this is the this yeah. is the PC release, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is where I would want to play it. So, um, yeah, I don't have the time though. That's uh, <laughs> that's a Harvestella situation. I don't know why Square Enix is just like, we got all these JRPGs. Here you go. Like, I don't have time to play one, let alone five of them. Yeah. And they're only gonna get. It's only gonna get worse. Um, we were talking about that earlier though. Like when Final Fantasy 16 comes out though, like I'm I have to play that. Well, and then. And you got to beat Final Fantasy VII Remake, but the second part of that's coming out too. <laughs> God, I have I forgot I didn't beat that. It's been so long I forgot I never finished it. Jesus. Um, I'm curious about Tactics Ogre Reborn. I love tactical RPGs. I feel like it's a crime that we don't get them really anymore. Um, I get they are niche, so you're not going to make like crazy big bucks off of them. It's but uh, higher on them for the mainstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw like really high reviews of that. I was like, "That's cool." So yeah, yeah. Um, kind of curious about Goat Simulator, except for I don't know if it's gonna have the same appeal as the original did because the original was like a meme, like it came out as a joke. Like, how ridiculous is this under 
cooked right place, right time, yeah. horrible looking game. That's a joke to play and people, you know, play and like, haha, it's funny. That's kind of over. I, we had to revisit it for plus club at one point, And I was like, I don't want to play this yeah. anymore. Like it's not a fun game and the joke's over. So yeah. um, I am curious to see what they do with this um, because I'm sure they've added, you know, some gameplay features and, more content stuff like that but uh but yeah maybe i'll just wait for that to come out on playstation plus uh dark pictures anthology the devil in me i would like to pick up i really like these games i think it's really cool that they honestly i think it's kind of cool they pump these out because um uh they typically have really interesting stories um even if the acting a lot of times is not that great. I need to catch up, though, before I pick this one up because I'm, like, two games behind now. So uh, the one we played, it had the, the co-op mode, and that was actually was, pretty good. It was weird yeah. that you kept playing it. Um, we had to do it for the show, obviously, but, like, we were just playing it because uh, the way they do the co-op was, like, really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, um, maybe I should just pick these up and play them co-op with you. Um, as long as my anxiety fucking deals with it, <laughs> and dealt with the other one just fine. Uh, Evil West, I'm 100% picking up. I'm uh, really excited to play that one. Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, I am uh, really excited for. I love Vermintide, Vermintide 2, fantastic games. This is essentially those games, but 40k, and uh, it is looking awesome. So, I got a lot of games to pick up and games that I want to pick up from this month. I'm trying to prioritize what I need to play, though. Um, we also have to do, reminder, we have to do our uh, Game of the Year discussion, like, next month. Yep. So uh, I need to start, like, buckling down and playing the games that I think I would consider for that. Me too. Um, even though I feel like I should play... Um, Oh, God. A Plague Tale Requiem, because everybody says that's like Game of the Year material. I don't know if I'm going to get to that or not. Uh, my biggest uh, priority is to beat Requiem, or not Requiem, <laughs> Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, I never beat Forbidden West. Yeah, I didn't either. I played it quite a bit, I, over halfway it through on. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got I to gotta sit down and start getting through some of these games. Um, be Elden Ring though so that's definitely in, in my running but uh, yeah a lot of games and it's kind of it's going to be expensive yeah but whatever uh, anything else uh, wishing I didn't have to work <laughs> true dude and I feel that <laughs> with that let us know in the comments do you wish you didn't have to work and what games in November are you looking forward to playing what games have you already picked up what games would you recommend what games are you gonna completely avoid and uh yeah any games that this list didn't have that you'd like to throw out there let us know everything you're thinking about in the comments below all right let's jump into what games we've been playing lately where we talk about the games we've been playing lately in like the last week or so uh let's start with your list chevy okay um played lego harry potter uh places plus game so i can't really talk about it Real quick, too, just a reminder, Neo 2, Lego Harry Potter Collection, and Heavenly Bodies are our games for mm-hmm. PlayStation Plus. We'll be talking about those at the end of the month for Plus Club, and our game of the month is God of War Ragnarok. Uh, anyway. I did put a couple hours into it, though, so um, I have a pretty good idea. I, I, I do want to try to play a little more. We'll see how it goes. It's kind of a rough month. Um, <clears throat> played Final Fantasy XIV, uh, just enough to do some raiding last weekend. We were having a pretty bad day, and we didn't even clear the fight we've cleared before. So, um, mm. it's gonna happen. We had one guy who like was struggling to keep his eyes open and stuff. So, um, we just kind of called it after a while. It's no big deal. We do it for fun, anyways. It's pretty bad when you're hopping on there and you can't stay awake. Yeah, I just wanted to. At, what, on. at one point, he said uh, it was kind of like when you you drive and all of a sudden you're like you get to your destination, you don't know how you got there. So, Damn. yeah, I was like, yeah, we should probably call it for the night. That's much safer, though. Yeah. Yeah, much doing safer. doing that in your, in your gaming chair. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, and then the other game I've been playing is Harvestella, um, which I can talk about. Hooray. <laughs> yeah, tell me about Harvestella. Yeah, so uh, I picked that up. Um, I had a vague idea what it was going to be. I knew it was going to be a RPG slash uh, farm sim style game. Um, what I didn't know is how much more of an RPG it was going to be than a farm sim game. Uh, it gives you a little bit of the, the farm stuff, um, off the bat. And then it kind of puts you into just full blown RPG mode and has so far, 
a pretty interesting story going on um, without spoiling too much of it. Um, you effectively, you find yourself in a town um, and you are kind of just woken up. I won't do the whole beginning because I, I do think it's part of the story. So, but uh, you're woken up and there's a... Uh, a house that's, that has been abandoned that's on the outskirts of town. They tell you you can just stay there. Uh, and then they give you kind of a rundown on how to like do the farming stuff. Uh, within a couple days, a large like meteor basically hits the ground. When, when you go to investigate it, it's a giant crystal and there's a door in it. Square Enix loves their crystals. They do. Uh, and then when the door opens up, you go in and there is a person passed out in there and then you put bring them into the house. And then so... Uh, you just kind of end up with like, this roommate um, who has their own story going on, which I don't want to talk about too much. And uh, it ends up, you end up connecting um, in that regard. I didn't realize this game had a party system. You can have three people in your party. <laughs> was not aware <laughs> that was a thing in this game. Um, they did a good job of um, not really talk, uh, unless I just missed it. I, I Honestly, I don't follow a whole lot of gaming news anymore just because... Uh, I don't like most people who portray it. So, <laughs> but uh, same. The combat is probably the weakest part of the game, um, and it's not bad. It's just not very exciting. If you're looking for something where you can like do a bunch of combos and like swing fast and stuff, it's not like that. Is there room for evolution though? It's so, a JRPG. So the way it works is like you have an attack button, mm -hmm. and there are multiple jobs. So your attacks can be different depending if you're a mage or you know a fighter, or okay. a monk, etc. And then you have a hold, I think it's R2, and there's two hotkeys, basically, for specials. Hmm. But the the attacks are like these like three-hit combos, and then there's a pause. And then a three-hit combo and a pause. So it's pretty Wait, slow did you buy paced. this on PS5? PC. Oh. Yeah. You said R2? I use a PS4 controller. Oh, okay. On PC. Okay. Yeah. This makes, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's my preferred controller, so. Um, the PS4 controller? Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah, I uh, actually I think I like it more than the PS5 controller for comfort and for most games. I think the PS5 controller is a good controller. Don't get me wrong, but um, the think, D think, pad is much better on the PS4 controller, and the um, the weight I think is a little nicer for me. So yeah, I love I love the Dual Sense, but I think the analog sticks on the PS4 controller I aim better with them. Yeah, so it's really I actually think the same with. Uh, we're veering off a little. That's fine, though. It's same with the Xbox, though. I think the last generation of Xbox controllers felt better than the current ones. So, like, or maybe I got, I'm skipping a gen. I don't think I've touched the new ones. So, yeah, the Xbox One controllers, I didn't like as much as the 360 controllers. Yeah. And feel. So, um, at the end of the day, they're all fine. Like, I'm like nitpicky is what's mm -hmm. happening here. But, um, anyways, yeah. So, I play with the PS4 controller. Um, it plays fine on PC. It does not have wide ultra wide support, um, really, which was a little unfortunate. But I do realize this is not like a triple A like title out of them. It's kind of like a little side project indie thing almost. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little hilarious. So when you fish, it goes into ultra wide. I I don't get it. The black bars they go need away. To patch that. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. So I'm hoping. I would say if it if it across the board didn't have it, I'd be like whatever. But if it does have it, yeah, yeah. During fishing, it it, it all of a sudden the black bars go away and the screen fills out. I'm like, why? Why is this a thing? Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> so it's a bizarre one. Um, yeah. Let's see. I think it's a it's a good looking game. Um, you know, it's not like the most amazing looking thing ever, but I think they have a good art style for it. Um, I th yeah, I think the style is really cool looking. Yeah. Right? Um, and then when you switch jobs, your character looks completely different. I've been playing as a, a mage a lot of time, and I have a full like robe on. And stuff what are like the jobs? That. So far, it's like uh, swordsman, you know, type okay. person. I don't know what they call it exactly. Um, there's a caster, which is like a mage right now, and I have ice and lightning spells. And then I just unlocked a monk job, which has it's one of its abilities is to actually just switch forms, so you have a different combo with it. Um, Interesting. It's kind of like a magic. And I don't know if it's like magic as much as like, you know, it's like a key thing where you like you punch and there's energy in the last mm -hmm. hit type of th thing. Um, the reason I don't use that one so much is because my teammate that I have in my party is that job. Yeah. And I don't see the point in having to. Um, 
So yeah, I don't have any livestock yet, though I have the, the places for it on my, my farm. I just haven't like invested money into getting that. The farming um, is exactly what you would expect from a game like this or Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon. Like it, it's all square based. You have to like clear rocks and sticks out of your way, or I, think, I don't even think there's sticks, I think it's just rocks. Um, you know, plow the earth, put the seeds down, water it every day. Can you put what you want where you want though? Yes. Okay. Uh, the one weird thing is I got a refiner so I can make juices and stuff now. So I can put like, hey. berries and vegetables in and make them, which is your health potions. Sounds hoity-toity. Um, but it takes a farm spot, like a um, plot. Oh. So instead of seeds, you put a, a, a you lose a, a bit of farm space there instead of like being able to put it somewhere else. It's a weird choice, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, you can buy and uh, buildings and, and uh, more land and stuff like that too when you're in town. Um, you can upgrade weapons and all these systems it has them they're all very like basic and it's not a bad thing but like the game is definitely not trying to be like super complicated in the way uh its systems are uh and then to my knowledge i think it's i at least i saw from someone on twitter it's like a 60 hour game which is um a pleasant surprise to me because i didn't expect it to be that long yeah that's on the longer end of what i expected because when we were talking about this earlier i uh I would have expected it to be 40 to 60 hours, and so I would expect closer to the 40 mark, but uh, it's pretty interesting to find out it is that long. Yeah, um, and then the story like is like a nonstop going, which is you know not a problem, but um, again, I guess I was expecting it to be more farm sim-like, and it's very much like trying to be a role-playing game, um, which I'm not complaining. It's actually a pleasant surprise, um, and I keep unlocking lots of side quests to do too, so you, you just get more and more... Um, and they're not hard or anything, but just more and more stuff to do, basically, to kind of flesh out the world more. So, yeah, I'm having fun with it. Um, I want to play more, but I have to kind of, like, take a moment so I can play God of War. Because uh, I have to beat that before it gets spoiled for me. <laughs> yeah, so. I uh, when I was sourcing videos for uh, this Tasty Cast, there was a thumbnail that uh, had a character from Ragnarok. And I, like, looked over and I started reading the title. I'm like, nope. Yeah. I was like, God, you that, motherfuckers that's me already, on dude. Mondays and Tuesdays on, on TikTok trying to avoid Bleach and Chainsaw Man spoilers. TikTok's a little rough because you're just kind of like swiping through and, and you're going to just be like no looking right at it. Warnings. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, uh, I I think we've talked about it before, but um, if a game just comes out and somebody on TikTok, when I'm like scrolling through, shows a spoiler without any kind of warning instantly, I will block that person forever. Like, I never want to see your content again. I've seen, you know, obviously we went and saw One Piece Film Red. Um, yeah. But I see all these people, like, all these cam footages from the theater in there. And I'm just like, block, really? block, block, block. I'm like, this is as exciting as when someone uploads their fucking firework display on 4th of July, man. Yeah. This is so dumb. Like, <laughs> I don't want to see a video of a video inside of a theater. This is so stupid. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. So, um I get it. They're excited. They want to share with everyone, but like, with that, so bad. with that, I want to share that we did a review over on Tasty Flicks of One Piece Film Red, and we did our most recent review of Chainsaw Man Episode Five. If you're watching that, if you're not watching, you should be. But if you're watching that, we've been doing episode reviews over on Tasty Flicks, which is linked down below. Yeah, but yeah, that sounds stupid. The people. Would fucking just film while they're watching it, it, it's it. wild because it's been like every day for like a week now and i have to keep blocking and it, it's not spoilers for me anymore i've seen it but i'm just like i don't want to see this <laughs> the tiktok thinks i'm just obsessed with uh call of duty modern warfare 2 at this point because that's all i see and i'm like i dude i like a lot of games yeah mine i was in a nice little uh nook there where it was like giving me stuff i actually wanted to check out and now it's like it's almost like trying to figure it out again and i'm like Swipe, 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 swipe. I'm like, oh, God, it's just cable TV all over again. Fucking mm -hmm. give me something I want to actually look at. So, um, but anyways, uh, Harvestella, fun game. So far, early impressions. Uh, if you were thinking about it, it's fun. I'd pick it up. Uh, you know, unless you just really need, like, a really complex combat system, then it's probably a pass. But if you're fine with just, like, playing a chill game with a, with a, a story, um, yeah, pick it up. It's cool. Yeah, I originally wanted to pick it up because I liked the idea of it being like a uh, Stardew Valley style game. Mm -hmm. 
but also being a JRPG. So I wouldn't be picking it up for looking like for a intense, complicated combat system because I feel like you're effectively making two separate types of games in one. Yeah. And so neither of them are going to be the deepest experience you could have. But if you can make them playable and fun enough, that's all I want. If, if you're going to mix the two. Completely so. serviceable. Yeah, yeah, that's all I need. So, Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I do know the one thing people have said, and I don't know if I agree with that now that I know it's a 60-hour game, but people are like, oh, I don't think it's worth 60 bucks. And that's subjective, obviously, but... Um, I think at the point where it offers the content I've seen and it goes on for 60 hours, I would say it's worth 60. So a dollar now. I mean, I don't like to, I don't like to I play don't mean that in game, that regard. but I'm just saying like if the content stays the way it is and I doubt it will, cause all JRPGs just unlock more shit, the further you go into yeah. it and it has a story at the pace it's going right now. It's worth 60 bucks. Yeah. Unless you think the, the gameplay looks like shit in which I would say you don't, don't play it but yeah. like um that's that's a huge chunk of content mm -hmm. so like i don't know that's all subjective people well, and yeah that that's why i emphasize it in the beginning like it's a subjective opinion but yeah. like um i feel that if it's gonna last that long and it is at the quality it is now or even remotely better it's 100 percent worth that price in my opinion. game like that's gonna drop down to 40 though pretty quickly probably so if you're if you're upset about that price point, although I, I would suggest if you want to harvest Stella two, buy this. Um, just wait if you're not if you don't want to spend that. Yeah. But I would have to play it to see the argument because from what I've seen and what I've heard so far, it's it sounds like a video game. And uh, when people are complaining about spending seventy dollars on games now, you're gonna complain about a sixty dollar game. Like yeah, the only complaint I saw on Steam, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, that I agreed with was the lack of ultra wide support. I do think in 2022 that's yeah, they, kind of inexcusable. They should patch that, yeah. <laughs> especially because it's in the game already. In the game, yeah, yeah, that's. If it wasn't, I'd be like, wow, they should add that, but it is added. So like, make it make it consistent. Yeah, it's not a deal breaker for me, but like, I'm just like, yeah. how hard is it to add? You know, a 21.9 resolution or 21.10, depending on your monitor. So. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, that's why we're playing. Nothing else. That's it. All right. I'm not um, going to talk about mobile games because they're all the same. So, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, so before I jump into what uh, what I have played, um, I have not played the plus games yet. I intend to because we have a show we got to do called Plus Club, and uh, I'll have Unless to play. You don't want to participate in that. <laughs> That'd be fucking stupid. Um, it's my show. I'm like, yeah, I didn't play him. Sorry. Show's got to talk to himself. Uh, but yeah, I definitely, I mean, I've played Neo too, so I could do that right now, but I'm going to play it. So, yeah, um, sure. I want to play some co-op in that. And then, uh, yeah, I plan on playing La or La Larry, <laughs> Lego Harry Potter, uh, collection. Um, he can be Larry. It's fine. Larry Potter. Um, uh, and I do want to play Heavenly Bodies. I thought that looked kind of neat. It sounded so, cool, yeah. yeah. So, uh, looking forward to playing those. Uh, and then I, you know, reemphasizing again, game of the month is God of War. I kind of pulled rank and made that the, the game of the month because I thought it'd be neat to actually like fully review it. Um, and uh, with that, I have played it. And because we are going to review it at the end of the month, I don't want to go into my full thoughts also i don't want to explore spoilers for people who aren't where i'm at i'm not even that far you haven't even played it yet just came out yeah so um i have to find a way to tread lightly through this um because i also feel like it's kind of dumb if i'm playing a game that's brand new and fresh if i'm not talking about my impressions a little bit so uh i'm just gonna say that uh the game is really good looking i'm playing on ps5 um acting's top notch so far um there are things right in the beginning of the game that uh the trailers never showed so they did a great job on keeping things uh hush hush which i really appreciate because this game's a story heavy game so i didn't want to know anything about it and uh they've done a really good job on on uh, keeping that hidden um combat feels like the last game but refined with more to offer which is what you want um, and there's something else I was going to add, but, uh, but yeah. Oh, uh, I'm for anybody who's curious about where I'm at. I'm not that far into the game. I'm in uh Svartalheim, which is the first realm. I don't have to put it that way. Um, 
which is cool because the footage that they showed of the game was like story trailers, which they barely showed anything there. And then the gameplay they showed was all in Svartalheim, which when I was going there, I'm like, oh, they only showed the first zone. That's cool. I'm glad that they, they yeah. kept it. Uh, I, I, I just feel excited because I'm playing this game and I'm like, I don't know what's coming. They haven't shown it. <clears throat> yeah, it's a rarity these days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Especially with like, uh, you know, it's movies, but like yeah. any big like Disney movie coming out. I mean, like Marvel movies and stuff. They'll tell you like every little detail before it even comes out. Who's playing what? What's going to happen in this? Stuff like that. I'm like, I don't want to know any of this shit. Yeah. Um, and some games are kind of like that too um, in their previews. So um, with a game this big, with a story, you know, this epic, I assume, um, I'm glad that they didn't they didn't tell or show too much so anyway i'm playing it i plan on putting uh, a lot of hours into it uh if we get done filming a decent time tonight i might continue to play it some more tonight because i would like to finish it by the end uh, of the month and be able to fully review it on game of the month okay uh let's see i've been, i've hopped back into deep rock galactic as you guys know uh, i'm a big fan of it i think it's like a near perfect game um season three just started um, if you don't know, uh, Deep Rock Galactic is a up to four player cooperative game where you play as dwarves and you go on random missions that are procedurally generated um, on a planet called Hoxus. And uh, there's different mission types where you essentially are collecting um, resources, whatever your mission is. Uh, there's ones where you like build pipelines, you have to protect them, all sorts of random missions. There's a lot of customization, a lot of perks, a lot of weapon upgrades. And every season they're adding brand new stuff. Um, and uh, I think season two implemented new secondaries for every class, um, which I've been exploring because I did not touch season two. Um, played season one a little bit. And then season three is implementing uh, one new grenade per class as well, um, which has been really interesting. Do I have that backwards? Is it secondaries this season? And anyway, there's new grenades, there's new secondaries. Um, I think it's grenades this uh this season but uh but yeah with seasons there comes um essentially like a battle pass but it's free um as you play you uh you get these things called scripts and other items cosmetics and stuff like that and when you get scripts there's a whole cosmetic tree you get to choose whatever direction you want to go in and it costs one script to move through it and unlock things um so that adds a whole new layer of things to unlock in the game um and it takes quite a bit. There's a lot of stuff they add per season. The thing I, I think is really smart what they do with seasons is they don't want you to feel like you're not going to get the stuff uh, from a season if you if you weren't playing. And so the game already had a system where there's like these hidden caches when you're playing. Sometimes you'll find like a helmet or a scanner and it'll give you a random location. You got to go find that location when you open it. Something comes out and there's other activities too that will give you random items. And they've essentially just taken that season's um, uh, items and they throw it into the pool for that. So okay. you still have a chance of finding it when you play. Gotcha, but gotcha. if you participate in the season, you can actually be a little more hands-on with getting that content specifically. So, but there's no FOMO. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is really nice. And uh, I do... I, I was playing so much for a while that like every time I opened up a, a, a cache, I would just be like... I, lo I love finding this stuff because I never know what I'm going to get. But I was like, am I getting to a point where I'm not going to find anything anymore because I'm like running out of stuff? Yeah. With every season, they're just adding more and more content for that to essentially be, um, you know, not never ending, but a lot of stuff to unlock. So um, I really like the way they're doing that. And yeah, got my driller to, um, I think I prestiged him the last prestige. I have three stars on him. Um, I think I got two on my assault guy our gunner and then uh i got my scout up to 25 so i'm about to prestige him for the first time one star him and i've barely played engineer because that's what sarah typically plays so i don't really touch that one a whole lot but i should level him anyway um and then they just did their halloween event obviously at the end of october so i got a bunch of new cosmetics from that uh like a pumpkin head and um witch hat and all sorts of stuff like that they had a cool uh visual event um, in the space station that was all like Halloween looking they had like I don't know they, they just do a lot of cool stuff for the holidays so glad to see that they uh, not I, it's almost putting it lightly to say that they support the game because the support for that game has just gone up so um, hopefully that's because the game's doing well I feel like 
every time they come out with like a bunch of new content, I'm like, you guys should start charging for some of this <laughs> stuff. Like, I know a lot of people probably hate to hear that, but I love this game so much. And I'm like, I want to give you money. They come out with like um, every season they come out with a cosmetic pack that's like seven dollars, and it's like a new outfit for each class, and uh, that's cool. But I'm like, I kind of want to give you more money, and you just keep giving away all the content for free. So um, I guess that's a me problem. I just want to support them. Because I know a lot of people out there are probably like, no, 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 just keep releasing free stuff. But I'm like, they got to make money. So anyway, uh, Deep Rock Galactic is great, fantastic, really happy to be playing it again. And uh, I love the way they're supporting the game. And uh, I highly recommend it to anybody who hasn't played the game to check it out. Uh, the other game I've been playing pretty much primarily has been Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Before you ask, I have not played the campaign. I hear it's fantastic. I hear it's amazing. I have not touched it. I have so many people telling me to play the campaign, play the campaign. Um, How weird. Yeah. Uh, Modern Warfare 2019's campaign was fucking dope, too, though. It's just funny because, like, and I think I talked about this last taste cast, but uh, game journalists didn't like the campaign. It's like, it sucks. Like, it's so simple and boring. And then all these people are telling me, like, dude, you got to play. It's so good. Like, you got to play. You got to play. And I'm like, <laughs> it's so funny how different it is. Um, but I obviously trust um, people who aren't getting paid um, to have opinions opinions more than somebody who's part of a business. Fair um, <clears throat> I just fucking. Um, so yeah. Anyway, haven't played that, but I've been playing the multiplayer quite a bit. Um, I am level fifty five, which is the level or the max level um, in it, and the season's not out yet, so I'm really excited to play that. So as of right now, I'm just kind of leveling up my guns. Um, in case you're curious, uh, I'm a big fan of the Castovs, which are essentially AKs. Um, I tried the original Castov, and it was uh, really good. And then I used the second Castov. I hated it. And then I'm using the 74U, and when I use that thing, I fucking destroy people. So uh, very happy with that gun. It's been really interesting seeing everyone's preferences with guns because the it's very different, and with the amount of attachments that is in uh, Modern Warfare 2, um, makes sense. You can really kind of make a gun into what you want it to be. Um, there are some guns that uh, are not good, though, and I think a lot of people are saying the M16 is not only the worst gun in this game, but the worst gun ever in FPS. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of crazy. Quite an extreme statement to make. Yeah. But. I guess it's just, like, really bad. I haven't touched it. Um but yeah, anyway, uh, leveling up guns right now, um, since I'm max level, been having a blast, been playing with some people um, regularly, um, and yeah, it's interesting because during the beta, I was kind of concerned about the maps, I wasn't a big fan of them, but the maps that they've released with the full release are all really good, so that's cool, um, I don't gotta worry about that, even though with the new season coming out, the two maps they're adding, I think are just re-releases from other CODs, and they're not even that interesting of maps i don't remember what they were i think it's like shipment and something else but anyway i'm not super stoked about those um but i'll take it um let's see what else uh game modes i like are um i mean i'm search i'm a search and destroy guy so i've been playing that a lot um but they've added a couple modes that i'm actually a really big fan of one of them is uh prisoner rescue which is essentially just CSGO. There's two hostages. You got to locate them. You got to pick them up. You got to escort them out. Um, I believe, I don't know if I got the numbers correctly, but I think you get 50 points per hostage. So you can get 100 points in a round if you get both of them out of there. If the team eliminates you, obviously you don't get those points. So um, it's really interesting to see like the plays every round of somebody like coming in and grabbing one hostage and getting out of there or getting both of them. Um, it feels really neck and neck. And uh, it's cool because when you get shot, you go down, you can get back up, but uh, but you go down one, like there's no respawns. So I really like that. It gives me that search and destroy feel that, uh, that I love so much because I like the risk and reward of essentially having one life. And um, getting those plays in where like, you know, if you're just going to respawn as soon as you die, it doesn't feel as uh, meaningful. Um, the other one, I think it's called Knockout. And essentially, there's just a bag of money, and it spawns in a random spot every round. And what you got to do is grab it and run. 
whatever team has it at the end of the match. I think you accrue points as well while you hold it, but when you win the match, you get... Isn't that some of those in, like, Red Dead's online? What? The grabbing a bag of money and, and taking it back type of deal? I don't remember, because I didn't play a whole lot of the PvP in Red Dead online. Hmm. But uh, there's been games that have done stuff similar to that. Um, that one's a lot of fun because it turns... It almost sounds like it'd be chaotic, but it's not really. Because it's like, what team can get to it? A firefight will happen on it, typically. And then whatever team grabs it will run. But they either choose to just keep running, or they find a spot, and the team tries to hold off there. And so it goes from like almost like a deathmatch feeling early on to a more like search-and-destroy style. Because if in this mode as well, if you go down... You can only get you get brought back up by somebody else, but that's it. Otherwise, you're just down. Um, so it turns into this situation where, like, you know, you lost like three people on your team, and you gotta decide: Do I go get the money back from this dude, or should I get some people back up? And you like, you'll watch at the top, and you'll see like, you know, people who are dead like popping back up on the other team and shit, and you're just like, oh shit, like they're getting their team back right. up and stuff like that. So there's like a strategy element to it that I really like. Um, and those are the three I play a lot. I think I play headquarters. There's one that's just like headquarters. They're they're almost the same game mode, but uh, one of those I like quite a bit. I don't really play team deathmatch or kill confirmed a whole lot because those just are not my. They don't activate enough of my brain for me to want to play them, um, unless I'm trying to level something. And yeah, the game's fun. It's a lot of fun. Been having a blast playing it, um, which is great to be able to say because the last two Call of Duties have been not great um and this one just feels good i I know some people have some criticisms of it a lot of the criticisms people have like the movement and the pacing of the game and not being able to slide cancel stuff like that i'm not on that team so i you know i can uh appreciate you're not into this call of duty but uh I want Call of Duty to be like this, so we just don't agree on that. Yeah, um, I said it's just a preference. Yeah. One thing I would love to see uh, Call of Duty do moving forward is I would love to see Infinity Ward continue to do what they're doing with this more slower pace, like realistic-esque Call of Duty. And I'd like to see Treyarch embrace what they've embraced for a long time, the more hyper, crazy, kinetic Call of Duties where they get more experimental because Treyarch is like really good at like map design. They have great ideas. They're really like inventive with stuff. Whereas like um, IW just feels like they're trying to make like a, a more grittier, uh, realistic experience. And it'd be cool to have back and forth just different experiences in Call of Duty um, based off the dev like that. But uh, they're going to do what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. But I do think it kind of sends. Um, a mixed signal to people who aren't paying attention enough um, to the devs on like, you know, if you're just a person, you're not paying attention to the devs and who's making it. You just want to play call of duty every year. And you pick this up after the last call. Of duty, you're like, why does it feel like this? I hate this. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, this is not the same people. Yeah. Um, it would, it would kind of make some um, clarity for, for people if uh, they had a plan like that. Also, um, I cover this, I think on TikTok, but, uh, there's a rumor that Jason Schreier was uh, talking about that said that um, in 2023, they're probably going to make an expansion to Modern Warfare 2 and Sledgehammer's going to make it, which I think would be perfect for Sledgehammer because I think they make kind of the most mediocre Call of Duties. They're not bad, but they're not great. But uh, if they could just be like a more supportive element of the development, like they got plenty of people. We already made, you know, the, like, you know, Infinity Ward or Treyarch. Like, we already made the game. You just got to kind of take the blueprint we, we built this off of and make more content. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'd be good. But anyway, they're, they're going to be doing an expansion, apparently, in 2023, which I think is very interesting because that hasn't been done yet in Call of Duty. Um, before, it's just like every year you get a new Call of Duty. And the thing that sucks is, like, if you're really into that Call of Duty, it sucks the next year just bouncing to the next one. And then if it's not as good, you're going to hop that's back. problem with annual games in general, man. Sure. I mean, I bitch about that with... <clears throat> well, I have more than that when it comes to Pokemon. But, like, you know, unless you're just playing just Pokemon all year, like, all the, the goals you have for it end up kind of going out the window because mm-hmm. you got to play the new one, so... Yeah. Um... So I hope that's I hope that's true. I think it'd be very interesting to get like a, a, a enough content to call it an expansion. 
And from Jason Schreier's uh, knowledge that he has on the situation, I guess, he said it's supposed to have a substantial amount of content, um, like a huge amount. So um, that'd be very, very interesting to get two years of Modern Warfare 2 and then get Treyarchs in 2024. I hope this is the plan because it sounds like a really good plan to me. Um, so, yeah, very interesting. Um, and, yeah, what else? Uh, I played the co-op a little bit in Modern Warfare 2. It's okay. It just kind of puts you on a big map and gives you some objectives to do. You run around and you do those and then you leave. Um, I know they showed off. Oh, I should have did a video for that. I should do a TLG Reacts. I know they showed off DMZ mode. And Warzone 2.0, but I have not watched that yet. But I heard a little bit about DMZ, and that's essentially their take on um, insert and extract style uh, games like um, uh, Tarkov and Hunt Showdown. Ah, okay. Um, where you uh, you show up, you go in, you kill people, you get stuff, you extract out, and you uh, use your rewards to essentially upgrade your character, which I think sounds really cool, especially on a AAA level. That'd be pretty crazy to see someone attack or you know attack that uh, style of game but i've been hearing really mixed things about it so i should just watch that on my own and do a reaction to that because that's a mode i'm ap or actually really uh really excited for so but we'll see because i've been hearing some very mixed things about it um warzone 2.0 i'm interested enough in but i'm honestly like two years into being pretty burnt out on battle royale so um yeah, I Not mean, if people, interest people are still playing them, they should definitely, you know, obviously cater to that. But uh, well, and Warzone's one of the most popular ones, so they definitely got to keep well, going. Yeah, one of the three, mm -hmm. so um, it makes sense. But I do think uh, the idea of new ones is like super unappealing. I, yeah, so. and I'm seeing that said more and more and more. It's not just the people who are already anti battle royale saying that; it's like people who were playing battle royales. Are saying like I don't really want a new one. I'll say your Fortnite players playing Fortnite, your Apex players playing Apex, yeah. and your Wars Warzone, right? Yep. Warzone players are playing Warzone. So. Yeah, and this I've been saying this for a while, but now it's just more apparent than ever. Um, there's no room for a new battle royale unless you just have an idea that's so undeniable, but most people don't. Um, and I've seen some pretty, pretty interesting takes, but they're not enough. So, yeah, it's gotta be more than just like a. Uh, an additional thing on top of the same old formula. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the thing is the formula of battle royales, even if you make it just a melee centric one, which a couple people have done or add NPCs to which a couple people have done. Um, you're still eliminating people to the end, trying to be the last one alive in a ever shrinking map. And that game type um, is already around. And a lot of people have invested hundreds of, thousands of hours into other ones already that they have things unlocked in and it it's, just makes way more MMO sense problem. exactly 100 yeah. 100 percent. so um you got to make a game that's like so fucking fun to play to offer something that they're not getting for someone yeah. else to even even humor it it's not even worth i would not not that i you know have any say on it but like i if i was a dev i wouldn't even start working on one unless i was like Do, you know what no one's done this yet but if you're trying to get that battle royale money, you should start trying to invent the next big genre. Um, I think that'd be a better investment. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, more for two though. Been really enjoying it. Can't wait to do the the upcoming season. I bought the vault edition of uh, of Modern Warfare Two, so I'm gonna get like 50 levels on the season pass instantly. So that's cool. Um, Cheating. Also, shout out, yeah, uh, shout out uh, to uh, Infinity Ward uh, correcting a really stupid situation where when the Vault Edition came out, there was some confusion that Ivan uh, was confused by that uh, y you buy the Vault Edition for, I think it was like 100 bucks, and uh, everybody was under the assumption that you got... Um, 10 XP, double XP tokens, and uh, weapon double XP tokens. Um, this is actually only if you bought it through Vanguard or through Cold War. Um, Cold War? Is it Cold War? I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it's goofy Black Ops, something. 
the, yeah, so they wanted you to buy it through that same price, but if you bought it through that, you would get those. And, you know, like a like a dumb consumer, I didn't I didn't read into it. That's on me. It's 100% my fault. But thinking back, I was like, that's just kind of stupid and shitty. Like, that just, like, tells me, like, we don't want to give you these. Um, which makes sense. They want you to play the game, stay in it longer, not level quickly. But so many people, when I looked it up, I'm like, where's my tokens at? And people are like, no, 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 you had to have bought it through this. And I'm like, oh, that's really lame. And then I just moved on with my life. But a lot of people were upset by yeah. that. So um, they very quickly were like, okay, a lot of people were confused by this. We're just going to give everybody who bought the Vault Edition that. So I got my tokens. I'm not complaining. They did the right thing. Um, but before, I was like, oh, that's really slimy. That's really shitty. But they're owned by Activision, so... <laughs> Yeah, what's no new? Yeah, what's new? Um, but yeah, that's the three games I've been playing. I don't really have any plans to play anything else right now. Although I got I got lots of plans, and none of them will yeah. be successful. So yeah, I didn't word that the best because we just talked about games coming out this month, and there's plenty of plans there. But yeah, yeah. Anything else? Nope. All right, let's know in the comments what games have you guys been playing? What games do you plan on playing? What games would you recommend us play? If you are playing. God of War Ragnarok, please, no spoilers. I will delete your comment if you if you say anything spoilery. Because um, I don't want that spoiled for me or anybody else. The game just came out. But uh, tell me what you think of it, though, if you're if you're enjoying it, stuff like that. Um, or put a spoiler warning. I don't care. Whatever. But anyway, uh, let us know what, you th- what you're thinking of it and uh, what you're thinking of other games you're playing. Let us know everything you think about in the comments below. All right. Uh, speaking of games that I plan on playing and want to play... There's a game called Evil West that's coming out this month. We talked about it. And uh, have you, do you know anything about it? Not off the top of my head. Yeah. It is a third person shooter based in the Wild West. Okay. Uh, you play part of this like um, supernatural uh, society of people who take out like supernatural things. And I guess there's like vampires in the Wild West that you're uh, killing. Um, I'm sure there's a greater storyline to it, but that's kind of the basic premise. Um, it's a third-person shooter. You got power, stuff like that. Anyway, the game has co-op, and I've known that for a while, but this is the co-op gameplay trailer, so I thought okay. it'd be fun to watch this, see what the co-op's like, and uh, yeah, honestly, this is just for me to get excited because I'm i already going to pick this up, but uh, I do plan on playing this co-op with somebody at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, before I watch it, do you have any interest in a third-person shooter that's co-op? Well, I mean, with with uh, that explanation, yes. But uh, you kind of lost me with the vampire thing, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Be, I'll be curious to see what you think about it because um, I think the game looks. It kind of reminds me of like an older time in shooters where they're just like not being like a live service game or not having like crazy. Uh, progression even though i love that it's just like a straight up just shooter for fun and uh you know super like not gore i mean like people are blowing up and you're cutting through people stuff like that so i guess it is gory but uh it just kind of reminds me of a different era in gaming so it looks like it's gonna be like a fun playthrough once with a friend kind of situation so gotcha yeah so this is uh evil west exclusive co-op gameplay trailer in three two one and go On that guy in the Wild West. Yeah, the like society that they're part of has like experimental weapons. How's it going, everybody? My name is Tomasz Gop. I'm a lead producer at Flying Wild Hog, working on Evil West. And today work. we're stoked to give you a first nope, look is, at though. the game's cooperative. Okay. <laughs> We have designed our game to be an exciting, old-school, gore, smashing, so vampire slashing, single-player yeah, action first game. and foremost. Still, if you want to enjoy the entire campaign with your friend, our two-person online co-op has got you covered. Evil West's co-op is simple and straightforward, so both players play as Jesse and only the host progresses the storyline. On the other hand, the challenge grows and some encounters have a slightly different enemy Double composition to spice things up. Double Jesse. All right, agents, the entire Flying Wild Hawk team wishes you a splendiferous trip to the Weird West. Enjoy the Don't gameplay. Say that again. 
Yeah, dude. I don't like that. Don't like that at all. Hey, Jesse. What's up, Jesse? Beating the shit out of him. Yeah. Why's the other Jesse not doing anything? I don't know, man. This game just looks like it's going to be like stupid fun. I, I would say uh, totally uh, some seriousness kind of aspect of the game. So, uh, so yeah, fun fact. Looks interesting so far. Yeah. It's just funny because I've been, I've been like following this game for a while, but like uh, when I've heard it's going to have co-op, going to have co-op, I'm like, okay, where's that at? Can we see it? So I'm glad they're doing a trailer for it. Kinda of reminds me of without being like a looter shooter Outriders, except for the the combat's a little less uh, cover shooter. It's more like a run and gun. Well, and I also love that you can punch these fuckers out. So four classes. There's just double Jesse. Yeah. Whatever. Just with uh, different weapons. Yeah. Yeah. You have a gauntlet on your arm that has like powers and electricity stuff. Punching. The more of a wild that's awesome. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> awesome. Abrupt. That was very nice. All right. What do What do we think? Yeah, I mean, it looks. Um, uh, the graphics are good. The The effects are good. Uh, the gameplay loop looks looks fine. It doesn't look like crazy or anything, but um, I'd be more so curious, like what i guess the the co-op's going to be other than just going through the story and in that case if that is the only thing um hopefully the story's really good because without having some form of like you know character progression mm -hmm. um you got to keep the player motivated so i don't remember fun in progression is kind of the, the the priority at that point yeah well luckily i think the shooting and the gameplay and this looks like a lot of fun which sure, you, you'd sure, expect sure. from like any game you want to play but some games i'll like kind of look over that honestly if like there's certain things about it i like or or one experience but right, uh, this gives and takes for sure but as just like a third person shooter i think there's a lot of cool stuff going on here a lot of like uh, people flying around blowing up a lot of creative weapons stuff like that um but the progression i don't remember specifically but i do think there's like weapons you unlock and then upgrades and stuff like that. So I do I do believe there's a progression. It'd be kind of crazy if it doesn't have that. But um. Well, then like what the question I guess becomes like because you play as Jesse the second like double what does Jesse. that mean for the the person joining the host? Yeah, I don't know. That's so. that's actually uh, as thorough as he was about explaining that it's just straight up co op. You just hop in and play with them. Um, it's based off of the uh, the host's mm -hmm. progression. Um. I wish they were a little more clear on that, but because uh, I'm curious about if anything carries over for them, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, it is a linear designed game as well. Right, we're right, going right. through stages, essentially. So um, it might kind of harken back to that era in for sure. gaming. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's fun enough, it's not going to matter. But uh, Yeah, exactly. Uh, just questions more so than, than critiques. So. Yeah. Yeah, overall, though, I think this trailer was cool, straight to the point, showed the co-op that I wanted to see. It looks like it runs well. Uh, I'm glad, you know, in a game where you can sit there and just punch people out that there isn't, like, a locked-into animation thing happening where, like, oh, now they can't attack this character that I'm attacking at the same time because, you know, the systems that are involved. So it seems like it's got a good, like, free-flowing co-op system that, that uh, seems to work really well. Um, it is kind of dorky that there's just two Jessies, but... Uh, I'm also okay with that because um, yeah, it's really not that big of a deal. It, unless they make the game for co-op in the sense of like the story has two characters, um, if you can play together and it's fun, that's all I want to do. For so, sure. Um, yeah, uh, the game is looking good, clean, looking like stupid fun, which is what I want from it. Especially with you know games like God of War Ragnarok coming out and being these huge like epic games. I do appreciate the games out there that are just low investment hop in and play and have fun and this is exactly what it's is it's looking like for me um 
And yeah, I, uh, I'm definitely going to pick this up and play it. Um, and uh, definitely going to do the co-op because it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, anything else? No. All right. Well, that was short and sweet. Let us know in the comments what you guys think of Evil West co-op gameplay trailer. Are you interested in Evil West? Or are you not interested in Evil West? If you are interested in Evil West, what did you think of the co-op? Are you going to play it co-op? Are you going to play it by yourself? And uh, what's some details about it? If you know that you want to throw out there to confirm maybe on progression, um, any info you want to talk about when it comes to Evil West, let me know everything you think about in the comments below. All right. Uh, a game that we've been a little mixed on. What is going on here? What is this? I say close it out. All right, it's closed out. Okay. Uh, for spoken has been a game that we've talked about on the channel for a while, and uh, my uh, level of interest on it has uh, fluctuated quite a bit. But I think I'm in the camp of I want to play it for sure now because everything I've seen on it so far, uh, gameplay wise, has been looking fun. Even though I think the main character, from what I've seen a couple trailers, doesn't come off as the most uh, charming of characters, but. Um, we got two videos we're going to be watching for Spoken because originally we had one video we we're going to watch and then like hours ago uh, another video came out that's kind of of the same like deep dive um, um, thing that they're doing here. Okay. And so yeah, we're going to watch this first one. It's for Spoken Deep Dive Magic Combat. They're going to go over the <coughs> combat and then the other video we got is uh, a deep dive on exploring Athia, Athia, the world I'm assuming. And uh yeah, before we watch these videos, they're about five minutes a piece. Well, that one's three and a half. So, um, like I said before, I think Forspoken looks like it's going to be a fun game. I think the graphics are good. Um, and it took until, like, fairly recently for me to actually get kind of hyped for the game because I was watching the the combat. And I was like, mm, that looks pretty cool. Looks pretty fun. But before that, um, I thought the visual style of it looked really good. I thought the graphics were good, but then I'd watch story trailers and it just was not doing it for me at all. It's doing the opposite. It's kind of pushing me away. Um, so yeah, I, like I said before, I'm, I'm kind of back to the point where I do want to play this game for sure because the, the gameplay is looking cool. The surfing around, which I think is weird, looks cool. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, with the last game, it's all about gameplay first for me. So, um, if the game looks like it's gonna be fun, I'm gonna want to play it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been in the camp of, of, uh, leaning like into like just buying it. Cause, uh, you know, it's the studio that made final fantasy 15. Um, I enjoyed that game, even though it had its weaknesses, but a lot of those weaknesses weren't necessarily because of the studio as much as just development problems and like project changing, um, midway through the game and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a little more complicated than just those, uh, than that team, but what they did produce, I liked, and this is a more, um, start the project end the project sort of process so it'll be interesting I'm, I'm very curious to see what they do with it um i love the graphics uh it looks really really good in that regard it also um has a lot of the creativity i expect from a square enix game to be honest um yeah the, i do think the weakest part was like we haven't really gotten a lot on the story to be honest um and that's kind of like if it's a role-playing game huge part of it um Outside of the whole fish out of water fucking, I was a normal girl in New York and yeah. now I'm in a fantasy and, world. And I'm okay with like keeping it kind of like minimal because you don't want to like just tell the story in a trailer. But yeah. um, I also just really don't know what's going on. Like it's really, really been uh, bare. But I also know that Square recently has just been kind of like focusing on teasers until like right before game launches at this mm -hmm. point. Which I think is smart because they are kind of known for doing um, way too early on their advertising and then hype yeah. kind of like dies off after a while. So, um, they're, they definitely have been, uh, a company that will put out a bunch of trailers for a game, like three years before it comes out. Yeah. And, and they've, it's like, and they've been too, chilling out on that. So. That's too early. Um, even with like Final Fantasy 16, they showed us like two teasers and then USB was like, not until we have some show. Mm -hmm. and then we did see something and it was a great trailer so it was actually really crazy though the first time they revealed it because there was like a lot more than i feel like they should have been able to show us yeah on that first trailer and then we didn't hear anything for a long time and i was like the game looked like it was done dude like where's the game at well, obviously but, not so. but then you know we got the most recent trailers and they're really good so yeah and didn't know what they're doing way more yeah so um yeah anyways overall my interest is um there um, unless something just comes out to push me away from it, I, I, I'm planning on picking it up. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So let's hop into this. This is a deep dive magic combat in three, two, one, and go. This is Athia, home to treacherous landscapes, corrupted beasts, and menacing threats. To survive in this wicked environment, Frey must learn how to master an arsenal of magical abilities. There are multiple types of spells Frey can learn to deploy, and each type of magic will have its own array of attack, support, and parkour skills. Frey will have access to the base spells of each magic type, with powerful That's upgrades available one. to earn by collecting mana. At the onset of her journey, Frey discovers the Earth-based purple magic. The quick attack spell for this magic is known as Shock. And by charging up Shock, Frey can unleash more powerful attacks. Burst Shock fires clusters of explosive rock. Shield Shot creates a defensive barrier while charging and explodes into smaller particles when released. Scatter Shot unloads a steady stream of rocks, then quickly triggers a high impact, long range projectile. Frey's Purple Magic also provides her with support spells that come in handy in a variety of ways. For example, Prime sets up explosive traps. Screen generates a force field, and Tendril heals, based the, uh, on how much damage it does. The moves in the combat looks fun. Yeah, for like, sure. It looks cool. Also, For more defensive-minded really players, like, Frey has a host of abilities that magic. provide her with yeah. survivability and battle. This is, like yeah. this is what it should have been. Learning how to dodge attacks with magic parkour is the key to defeating the corrupted threats of Athia. But when she does get struck, Frey's trusty sidekick, Cuff, will take the hit it's to reduce the damage down and create an opportunity for a counter I hate that they're using that word. It's like, it's kind of the opposite Cuff of Cuff can parkour. also be extremely useful before any enemy encounter occurs. With Cuff's assistance, Frey can scan the area for nearby points of interest and potential threats. Additionally, Cuff can examine enemies to provide valuable intel on their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like Later that's part of Friday. Frey's journey, she will unlock fire-based red magic. And these spells open up new ways to play. Spells like Fusilade, Aegis, and Legion are strong defensive options. But sometimes a strong offense is the best defense. Red magic gives Frey the ability to unleash some devastating melee attacks. The quick attack really spell good. for red magic are, yeah. bestows Frey with a magical blade called Slice. A charged up Slice unleashes the magic attack's arc, Very blast, creative name. and Rage Slice. Additionally, the red magic support spells provide various offensive capabilities, like the red such as is Charge a mix and Bombardier. In addition to purple and red magic, Frey will gain access to blue and green magic as she progresses on her journey. These magic types also offer a multitude of attack and support spells for Frey to master. <laughs> Using a attack and moves. support spells yeah, no, gradually it's, charges it's Frey's surge magic, eventually enabling her to cast an extra powerful spell. Used at the right moment, it can wipe out an entire opposing force in one fell swoop. Frey can also choose to end an opponent by dealing a killer blow. A devastating move she can perform when an enemy is stunned on the ground. Experimenting with different magic types and abilities allows Frey to tailor her combat style to suit any perilous situation. With a wide range of magical abilities at her disposal, Frey will have a multitude of ways to deal with any situation she may encounter. Only after mastering these new abilities will she be able to defend Athia really against hard, the corrupting force of the break. And perhaps find a way back home.
Yeah, quite a bit of a quite a bit of abilities, which is pretty cool. And not just even for like a game like this, but like a lot of games don't have that many abilities no, going it's on. A lot. So between this and uh, Hogwarts Legacy, it's kind of interesting to see some like magic based combat games. Yeah, yeah. Because like this this chick's not she doesn't have a fucking weapon. All yeah, her stuff all is spells. is spells. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Kind of digging it. Yeah. Um, before we talk about that too much, let's watch the other video real quick. Okay. Uh, this is exploring uh, Athia, I think they said, or Athia. I don't remember. Um, yeah, we'll watch it and then we'll talk about what we got from all this. Okay. Athia is a sprawling, magical world filled with adventure and discovery. On her quest to save this mystical land from the Tantas, Frey will uncover a variety of interesting detours, formidable challenges, and even a few delightful Damn. encounters. Some detours are provided by Athia's locals, who are in desperate need of Frey's help, while other points of interest can be found via marked locations dotting the vast landscape. Scattered across Athia are monuments, sacred stones where the Tantas once stored a fraction of their power. Freeing these landmarks from the corrupting force of the break will allow Frey to grow stronger. Certain monuments will present challenges called flashbacks that can earn Frey mana or other rewards upon completion. These can be attempted directly from the world map and can be repeated as many times as she needs to fully master them. Another type of sacred spot to be uncovered are Founts of Blessing, where Frey can awaken her dormant magical abilities and learn new skills. Oh, Frey creatures. can also upgrade her magic through spellcraft challenges, which are found in ancient books across Athia. Shimmy. Old coins are a valuable commodity in Athia. Frey can collect them on her journey and then exchange them at trading spots for valuable items. Hmm. Beneath the surface of Athia are a myriad of locked labyrinths. Exploring these mysterious underground locations can be extremely dangerous, but also rewarding as they hold powerful equipment in their depths. Saving Athia is a serious undertaking. And Frey will need a break from time to time. She can play a game with Partha, dice-like objects made from animal bones. Rolling them is said to bring good luck and can earn Frey a temporary battle boost. She can also take pictures at photo spots and show them to the children like back in Sapal. The more pictures she takes, the more features she can unlock in Photoshop. I'm going over this because watching before I'm like, Frey will do? also yeah. encounter like some fight furry things in fields known as the Tantas Familiars. Damn. These feline Adorable. creatures usually roam around Why special monuments dedicated to them, but can pose quite a challenge to befriend. Conversely, Frey will come across some severely mutated beasts. These large, ferocious creatures are as awe-inspiring as they are terrifying and offer Frey the greatest opportunity to put her skills to the test. With so much more to uncover and experience in Athia, Frey will quickly learn that this magical land and its inhabitants are indeed worth fighting for. All right, January 24th, close to my birthday. What do we think? Uh, I think Square needs to like relax on all the releases, man. Holy crap. Yeah, they got, they got a lot. <laughs> um, I think these last two trailers are when I complain about trailers all the time. Uh, this is this is what I'm looking for generally. Mm -hmm. uh, they were good information. They showed off stuff, but I also don't feel like they spoiled much of anything. Like, um, I'll take this over a CG trailer any day. This was this was nice to be able to see the combat, uh, both in slow motion, discussed, and then shown in full speed as long. As well as like showing some more like the world stuff, which is important too, because um, it's definitely an open world game. Holy crap! Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it seems like you're gonna be able to put some hours into this game. Yeah, I realistically like 
combat and like uh, depth of, of systems look like it's there. Um, it just needs to have like even a half decent story, and I think it's it's honestly going to be a winner. So yeah, yeah. This is uh, the the more I'm seeing on this game, the more I'm interested in it. But they're now just more so showing me what I want to see, and what I'm seeing is good. Um, the combat's looking cool. The abilities looking cool. I'm liking that they're skill trees. Um, the combat's actually like really cool looking to me. Yeah. Like I, I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, but I finally got an answer to the question I, I had originally when I saw this game and I kind of already said it, but like, what are you going to do? Is it just like running around doing missions, killing enemies, whatever? Like I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that in any game, but like, what else do you got? And it seems like they've thought about that because it seems like there's a lot of different things going on. They have like little like mini games. They got a variety and, uh, uh, quest type side quests the weird little cat people you're running around chasing after the labyrinths. Um, the labyrinths uh these uh chests that have these little puzzles that you're doing to open up um it looks like they've thought about making sure that the game is not monotonous to play um which i really appreciate because that is a huge factor for a lot of open world games is yeah 10 20 30 hours into the game you start going like i've been doing this the whole time it's the same thing over and over and over again so um it looks like they're at least thinking about that and that's that's a good uh you know step in the right direction um i'm also seeing that there's gear which is cool to see Uh, and then going into labyrinths you're going to be uh able to find better stuff which is exciting will make going into these labyrinths you know feel more exciting knowing there's going to be a reward for doing it the the photo spots don't do anything for me because the predetermined photo spot it's not exciting for me, yeah. um, but uh, it's cool that they even thought about it. But it's essentially going like, "Hey, see this place? You should take a picture of that." And it's like, oh, "I would have done that naturally, but now that I got to do it, I'm sure I'll get XP or something." But um, that's cool. Um, but yeah, outside of not really know much about the story, um, everything else is looking pretty cool. So I'm glad. You know, I I can uh, I don't even think we're that. I don't think we criticize games that much compared to a lot of people because we, me and you are pretty. Uh, I guess open-minded when it comes to a lot of things, but uh, you know, I do like that if I do look at a game and I am critical of it, um, being able to be swayed from that. I don't, I don't ever want a game to be bad. I say that all the time, and so with this game originally, I, I was kind of interested. Then I was like, nah, it looks kind of stupid. Like there's something about it. I'm not, I'm not really digging. And slowly but surely, I'm becoming more and more interested in this game. So I'm glad that that is the case. Um, a similar thing happened to me with uh, with Outriders. I remember seeing that game. Like that game looks like a generic piece of shit. Like I, it I turned know. out to be fun. And then I played it, and I was like, mm, "This is pretty fun." And then I played the full game, beat it, and I really liked it. Um, yeah. I would really like an Outriders too. So, um, yeah, it's always nice when that happens. Um, but it also is rare that a game comes out that I think is like bad. So I'm also excited for Square to be making like a new IP. Yeah, for sure. I was getting a little worried, and it, it, I'll take fan service all day long. But they mm-hmm. were like really kind of just like being real safe there for uh, a couple of years while they yeah. were uh, trying to earn trust back. I assume, but uh, so much fan service and no new IPs, and now we're getting new IPs and stuff. So and and quite old a bit. series coming back and stuff. So pretty happy about that. Yeah, yeah. Square Enix definitely feels. It seems like they feel pretty comfortable right now. Yeah to be doing all this. So it's kind of like a square Enix of old, which is uh, definitely cool to see. Mm. Um, but yeah, overall I'm looking forward to this. I think I'm definitely going to pick it up. Uh, it looks like it's going to be at the very least a fun game and that's all I want for my game. But um, yeah, the combat alone looks fun. Even if the main character, uh, they didn't show that in this trailer. So maybe they either are just hiding it or they got rid of it. But in an earlier gameplay uh, video, I watched, she was talking a lot non-stop and i was like why <laughs> a lot of games do that too and I, like i get like there's a balance to, though yeah you want it to feel alive but nobody just sits there and goes blah 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 blah, blah. so yeah um well i think uh naughty dog really got a lot of people going like we should probably do that too because like naughty dog's really good at having like ambient chatter yeah but they do it really well. And then games like uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Aloy talks a lot. And uh, I actually heard a lot of people complain about, you know, 20 hours into the game, she's saying the same thing every time she approaches this object yeah. or whatever. Um, 
it didn't bother me when I played that, but I didn't play it so long. I, didn't, I never beat it. So, um, but this, having watched one video where she was talking like nonstop, I was like, Ooh, hopefully that's not the whole game, right, right. but I'm sure you could always turn that down if you didn't want to listen to it anyway. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll find out if that's a factor or not, but, uh, it is really interesting that we're at a point in gaming where some people could possibly think a character's talking too much, which is really interesting to think about. But yeah, overall, I'm excited to play this. It's looking like it's going to be a fun game, which is awesome. Anything else you want to say on it? No. All right, let us know in the comments what you guys think of Forspoken Deep Dive, Exploring Athea, and uh, Deep Dive Magic Combat. What stood out to you? What uh, what looked good? What didn't look good? Maybe you're still critical of this game. Maybe it still feels kind of weird to you. Like, eh, I don't know. There's something off about it. Um, what do you think about the Magic Combat, though? What looked cool to you? There's quite a bit of abilities. I, I think you can't really deny that. They, they, they put a really lot of work into that. The trees, so. Yeah. Well, we got a little hints of the other ones, though, too. But yeah. even in the two trees, there's like a lot of things she was doing. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. There's like four trees, that many abilities. I assume you're going to be able to upgrade, I don't know, them or at least your character to make them more powerful. Right, we'll, right. we'll find out. But, um, yeah. And then uh, what do you think about the exploration? Do you think it's enough? Do you think it's plenty uh do you think it's not enough um and uh what are you hoping for or from for spoken let me know everything you're thinking about in the comments below all right last video we got is a new game that was shown off just recently so i had to throw it on here it's a uh, project the perceiver i know nothing about this game at all but i know a lot of people are talking about it right now um it is a uh, chinese open world action game though um, we're seeing more and more of those lately it seems and uh it's interesting because uh None of them have come out yet, so I haven't played any of them, but um, we're seeing more and more like Chinese-centric games, um, and uh, I'm definitely curious to see um, how this new wave of, of games uh, is received. Um, but yeah, this is an open-world game. Some people are comparing it to uh, like from from software games. Yeah, we'll see. So we'll see. <laughs> um, Even people who make from-style games don't usually get it, so... Yeah, yeah. Most people can't get that formula yeah. down like they they got it down. But um, yeah. Without really knowing a whole lot about this game, I figure we could just watch this and we can yeah. talk about what we got from it. Cause I keep seeing it on Twitter. So uh, yeah, I would ask you a question about it, but you don't you know less than I do. So yeah, yeah. So might as well just watch it and then we'll talk about it. Okay. This is uh, Project the Perceiver in three, two, one, and go. Debut trailer. PS five, PS four. It's just a seven minute CG trailer. Trump's kind of getting thrown out the window right now with the speed. I guess Sekiro is fast, basically. Yeah, I didn't point this, though. I think the animations are good, though. And obviously, it's crazy that Wukong game is still not out, but, uh... And it's an older game at this point, even though it's been in development forever. Um, this is almost a little more impressive to me. 
Uh, I agree with like that. Like gameplay wise, I, I think that other game is more looks versus uh, yeah versus uh, playability. This actually looks like something that it actually looks like uh, a game with like the good uh, controls and stuff mm -hmm. like that versus like a lot of the the other games I've seen have been style over substance. Yeah, I, um, get, I could definitely agree with that. Like that one, like uh, Final Fantasy esque style yeah. one. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, one's all over the place. She looks just like looks, and that's mm. it. So, um, yeah, and w the Wukong game, I, I think it looks cool for sure, but uh, I think it's interesting if they're making a Wukong game. But uh, it's like a lock-on based combat game. This yeah. this is more, you can tell it's an open world game. Yeah. The way that you're like free flowing, running around, the wall uh, jump transition on the roof was like really smooth. <laughs> I'm really impressed with that enemy's animations. Mm -hmm. They're doing a lot of cool stuff in the air. So they're spamming that shit. Yeah, a lot of It looks good. The environment's really good looking too. How are they moving? I wish it was a little more vibrant. It's really muted. Very muted. I don't mind it so much, I kind of like more uh, realistic tones in games. A little overdone with super colorful, but... It doesn't have to be super colorful, but saturation is picking up a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's almost it's black and white. Like... <laughs> Especially when the CG trailers are going to Yeah, exactly. I get it. If it looked like that, I'd be happy. I wasn't reading the subtitles at all when he was fighting. Is that him? <laughs> like, she fight himself? Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he'll play as both. Well, that's better looking. Maybe it's just that one place. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Let's see, yeah, this looks nothing like that other yeah. one. types or abilities or something i don't know that was pretty chaotic yeah it's hard to kind of follow what the hell's happening there which i felt kind of the same when we watched um that like 
that well wukong and that final fantasy style yeah, one the, like the dmc slash yeah. final fantasy it's like one. they're all really chaotic like there's so shit yeah. going on but um overall that was really interesting i didn't really know what we we're getting into here so um we definitely got like the 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 chinese uh style visuals combat um which i think is cool looking um i think tonally it was a little inconsistent um this trailer was all over the place but um not really in a negative sense it was just kind of sloppy feeling like the cgi parts of the trailers and the gameplay that had the muted colors but then gameplay later that had like more vibrant colors and other cgi s- sections and i, I kind of wish we got a forespoken gameplay description on what, what's going on in the game what to expect um but honestly, I think visually the game looks good. I think the animations are actually really impressive. I think um, more than like you know Wukong and a couple other games that we've mentioned, um, this looks like more of a game to me. Like it looks like gameplay wise, this is I want to play it. So that's pretty cool. Um, the combat looks cool. It's really fluid. The animation is really good, but also kind of seems like it has like. Um, um, I don't know if he's locking on or not, but, uh, you know, maybe something close to Ghost of Tsushima. Um, but uh, it's it's looking like a game I would want to play, which is really cool. Um, don't know anything about, you know, like upgrades or what you're getting by playing this game other than just kicking people's ass, which I'm okay with. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's looking pretty cool. And graphics are good, even though um, I'm just seeing more and more games now that keep, t- like, saying that because, like, Unreal Engine 5 exists. And yeah. All this shit. So every game I look at, I'm like, that game looks good. That that game looks good. So it's just easier and easier to make great looking games now. But uh, which is definitely not a, a bad problem to have. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have much else to add outside of like I do think it looks cool. I want to know more about it. And this is kind of something I said when we watched the Wukong gameplay as well. I was like, yeah, it looks cool, but I I need to see more. I need to know more about it. Um, yeah. And. Uh, See, even there, it almost looks like there's like a transition between like the last environment and this one, where like the color muted. So maybe it is like a cinematic thing, or yeah. has to do with the situation. Um, this boss fight, even though um, I assume it's a boss fight, it's a, it's, a, it's an event. Um, you know, definitely had uh, some repeated animations, which is expected. But uh, a lot of the animations are actually really good looking. I think the imagination's really good. And uh, yeah, honestly, at this point though, I just need more info on the game. But as a concept, it's definitely got my interest. Yeah. So out of the three that I can think of um, games that we have seen coming out of uh, China now, um, this one's probably the most interesting of the three for me. I actually yeah, I have like, almost no interest in the other two. Um, and this suffers from a, some of the, the same problems, but overall, like you said, and I think it was a good way to word it, this one feels like an actual, like, like a game um as the other ones feel more like i don't know <laughs> graphical showcases cutscenes games. almost yeah. like you know it's it's pretty to look at but like it doesn't it looks like all over the place mm-hmm. and this comes off a little spammy as well um i don't know if i'm so like in love obviously i'd have to see how the combat actually plays with the controller this is all showcase and it's meant to look you know the way it does but um I don't know if I'm in love with it, uh, but the environments look good. The characters look good. The the graphics are good. The animations are good. Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to um, Chinese uh, fantasy and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff lost on me. That's not a negative or a positive. That's just I don't know enough about it. It's like lost in translation. Yeah, um, which obviously like could be taught to me in a video mm-hmm. game. Like so, like that's. Um, that's all fine, but it, it is hard for me to like get excited for that kind of stuff because yeah. I don't have an affinity for it, right? Um, I and this is a typical problem because uh, I know, you know, culturally they don't they don't do a lot of uh, blood, mm-hmm. uh, but it, I always think it's weird when in games when you're especially when they have realistic tone uh, color palettes and stuff like that uh, when people are just swinging swords at each other and no one's taking like any physical damage whatsoever. It's kind of strange to me. Yeah. Um, Again, it's not like a huge deal. I could play a game without blood, but um, and they don't have to be like gushing all over the place either. But just some form of 
damage. Some, some kind of some feedback, sort. yeah. Yeah. Um, all I see is sparks, and then you hear thud noises every once in a while. And then the bar's just going down. Yeah, and it's yeah. not super satisfying. Yeah, um, I get that. And I know that was a complaint, even with like Nier Automata. I love Nier, um, but there's not a lot of hit feedback in mm. Platinum Games' um, titles. So I'm um, getting the same vibe here. Yeah, so, I can see that. Um, but overall, yeah, like I said, out of the three, it's the most interesting one to me. Um, I have no interest in the other two. I would probably keep an eye on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I need to see something with more like technical um, uh, descriptions of what's happening and like actually showing us the game from a player's perspective and mm-hmm. not from an advertising uh, perspective. So, Yeah, not a concept they're selling to you. Yeah. Um, this part was interesting too, showing like these... Uh, you know, trippy scenes. So I'm glad they, they showed something that wasn't just uh, him running through fields, hitting things. Yeah. Shows that there's going to be, I guess, an element of story. Yeah. Um, to offer. Yeah. I, uh, I think it looks cool. And I agree out of the three, it does look like the, the most game gamey of them. That seems less like a, uh, a technical showcase of like, you know, we can make a good looking game too. Um, yeah, and maybe you're curious about why we're talking about like you know comparing to other games. Um, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of Chinese development uh, or devs making Chinese games and getting them in the, the West. Scale. Yeah, so it's you know kind of a new thing in gaming, and uh, without you know Chinese devs being proven to us yet, we don't really know what to expect. Yeah, and so and that we're into video games, we're curious about what they're bringing to the table and we keep seeing a lot of um you know proof of concept uh trailers for games that they're working on but without having played any of them um it is it is just a curiosity so for sure i um, that and like you know they're all they've all been like beautiful but mm-hmm. as you said like it's getting easier and easier every, to do it's getting easier to make beautiful yeah. games so, so like, is the game gonna be fun and that also doesn't make a good game that yep. just makes a uh good eye candy yeah right um and like I said, this one feels like something like I would be interested in yeah. playing because um, it so far as out of the three I've seen has shown something that resembles some form of gameplay other than just like showing off, I guess. So Yeah. Well, it's like Wukong, I think like making a – and so many things are inspired by Wukong. Wukong sure. But to make like just a Wukong game, I think it's really cool to play around with his abilities, which he has like a shitload. I've been yelled at on YouTube over before. Um, people tell me, you know nothing of Wukong. Okay. Very, very, okay. very protective of their, uh, of Wukong. Um, of their Wukong. Uh, um, uh, I think that sounds really cool too. And then watching the sure. gameplay, like all the abilities, all the stuff going on, it's really cool. But like when you really look at it though, it does seem like some of the hit registries kind of off. Some of the impacts don't look as good as they could. And it does almost look like you're walking down a lot of hallways and doing boss fights, which is a lot of games in general, but it's not enough to keep me really you know, excited, excited but, the, right, but the graphics yeah. are good i'm curious about the story i'd want to play through it for that and the abilities look cool so that's kind of like you know where i'm at with that now that i've seen it for so long without yeah. the game not coming out whereas when i watched this first thing i thought was like this looks like a video game this looks like uh you know an open world game where you're around doing things so we didn't see much of that but we're we're definitely seeing a, a game that looks like it plays well yeah, and I'm uh, pretty stoked about that. So yeah, I mean, this is no different either than like when we were starting to get like heavily inter- uh, introduced to like um, a lot of Korean games too, because mm-hmm. like that was new at, at one point to us, and everything was shiny looking. Yeah. But then come to find out, um, and culturally, obviously, uh, but they're a little more open to being ha- like having super grindy games, and that doesn't yeah. necessarily translate over here very well. So yeah, you know, some people strips won't play a game like that. Sure, so. and so are we going to run into something like that again? Where like maybe there's just something there that doesn't translate. And we have culturally. no frame of reference None. of like yeah. the philosophy of Chinese game development. At so, least I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, well, no, like, I've never sure. played one. So yeah. that's kind of the the big thing for me when it comes to these games. Is like, uh, you know, what are they going to bring to the table in terms of games? Are they going to copy? western style games they're going to bring their own things to it um you know what what is important in the gameplay yeah um stuff like that so it's definitely uh you know without having played any of them still i uh i don't know so but true when it comes to just being a game it looks interesting and i'm uh biggest thing is i'm impressed with the animations i think they look really good they do yes and totally i think the game looks cool too 
Um, so yeah, overall pretty cool. Definitely gonna keep an eye on it. Mm. Um, but I don't know when it's coming out, how it's coming out, if I'm gonna be able to play it. So uh, fucking never at this rate. Well, the other uh, two games aren't out either. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know when those are coming out either. I have no info. So yeah, anything else? No, I'd be curious to see the 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 future, uh, specifically this title. Like I said, the other two I've kind of written off at this point. They they're just not really in my wheelhouse but this one is a lot closer to something i'd be interested in so i will be curious to see where it goes there's another chinese game that looked like uh it was like i forgot what it was called but people were calling it the chinese ghost tsushima where you could like jump was, off people's heads and stuff was it a chinese game or was it a chinese themed game made in, i don't remember in a country i don't remember i think i thought, that, I thought it was a i almost wanted, i thought almost thought it was a kobe Tecmo game for some reason but oh maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe. i don't know i'm getting all mixed up at this point but that one looked interesting too but yeah anyway anything else no all right let's know in the comments what you guys think of project the perceiver uh is it looking cool to you is it not looking cool to you um what's your opinion on uh games coming out of china and um what do you want from this game um is there any concerns about it and uh yeah let me know everything you think about in the comments below when it comes to this debut debut trailer of the perceiver and yeah Let's jump over to uh, your guys' comments and uh, read them and reply to them. If you want your comment to be read, make sure to type in hashtag AskTLG. Otherwise, I read at random, and I am doing it this time. There are some comments under the video. I'm skipping those. So if you don't want your comment to be skipped, type in hashtag AskTLG. Otherwise, I will read whatever the hell I want to read. <laughs> and, yeah, this is from our last – was this TasteCast? I believe so. I think this is TasteCast. It's almost where three hours. We, it probably is. Where we talked about God of War Ragnarok. Combat, Resident Evil 4 Remake, and uh, Final Fantasy 16 trailer, which was a really good trailer. So if you want to really see a reaction good, of yeah. that, go check that out. And we got a couple comments. So the first comment is from Tom B saying, The current state of the industry is quite unreal. Lol. But with Witcher, they uh, all were clunky, even three to some extent, like the horse swimming and some stuff here and there. Dude, I sure have had a moment where Roach was standing sideways on a wall. I was like, ah, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, continuing. But everything else was beyond excellent and holds up pretty damn fine. Resident Evil 4 looks so sick. And with all the remakes, Resident Evil 4, I look forward to the most. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 also looks amazing. 15 was a mess. If they stick to what they did with uh, 7 in terms of gameplay and build upon that, it will be great. What do you got to say to that? Um, where do I start? Uh, I can't. Yeah, really he, he put a lot of stuff into like minimal sentences. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't really speak too much on on The Witcher because I realistically just have not played them very much. Um, I've tried multiple times; they just don't really hook me. Um, it's kind of an accepted thing across the board that like all The Witcher games have had some clunkiness and some glitchiness and some bugs. A lot of people like to bring up Witcher Three when it comes to Cyberpunk's release, even though I do not think they're the same. Um, Cyberpunk had a much worse launch. For sure. Um, but The Witcher 3 did come out with some pretty bad issues. Right, right. Namely, the horse had a lot of weird things going on with it. Um, but uh, I do agree with him on on what he's saying. Like, even with all that, though, the games were excellent for sure. So Well, and everyone only speaks positively of it even when they refer i mean it reminds me of like rockstar right rockstar games are buggy too and people just speak highly of them it's the same kind of concept right yeah if you make if a game is ambitious you have to expect it to not be 100 percent perfect because they're they're never going to come out yeah and (laughs) and i'm not trying to make excuses for like bugs in games but like you have to be realistic the crazier the game the bigger it is the more they offer the more variables there are, yeah. uh, the more complicated the game is, the more complicated the systems are, there's room for error. And so like a Rockstar game has like, last I knew, like three or four different engines. Right? It's not just like one engine. It's It had like multiple engines running at the same time, doing the AI, doing the physics, mm-hmm. doing all this shit, doing the graphic rendering. That's a lot of chaos for you know things to run completely smooth. And I think for the most part, they do run really well. Um, but when, when you run into an issue, um, you got to understand why it's there. Same thing with like a big open world game. For Every sure. open world game has issues. Oh, so. yeah. Anyway. Um, Resident Evil uh, visually looks cool. I, again, it's kind of like out of my my uh, gameplay loop. But um, I do like visually what they're doing with Resident Evil. And uh, at least from what I've heard from you know 
Seth here. <laughs> it's me. Uh, who I, uh, you know, trust his opinion on things. I would uh, say they are on the right track right now. Uh, 16 does look amazing. Um, I have some minor concerns. Those are definitely very personal. I don't think there's anything wrong with the game, though. It looks looks great. I am definitely picking it up. I will play it. Um, 15... I don't know if I'd go so far to call them. I think it's development was a mess for sure. 100%. I think the only problem with 15, in my opinion, obviously, feel free to disagree with me, um, is that the middle feels empty. Yeah. The beginning of the game feels great. The end feels really great. Uh, The middle is meh. Yeah, it feels like they lost direction. There's like... Well, you can go explore and do stuff. Yeah. We didn't give you that much stuff to do, but you know, it's it's all free form here, like yo, it's our open world game. But then it feels a little more structured in the beginning and end where like you're like, Okay, now I get the direction. Now well, I have purpose. Yeah. To turn things I want to do. Like And the ending was very much a Final Fantasy ending. Yeah. 100%. So like I, I really had uh, fun with that. Uh, but I could understand if someone got to like the middle of that game and just dropped it. Because mm-hmm. like they don't know, right? And not everyone's patient enough to sit through it. So, um, they stick to Final Fantasy VII. So I like Final Fantasy VII. Um, I do want them to be a little different because I do think Final Fantasy VII uh, is fine in its combat. Um, but I feel like it's almost a little basic. It's kind of hard to explain. I feel like I'm just mashing a button when I'm playing that game. So. I don't know. I don't have like I don't. I have, I have, I, I'm being very nitpicky. I loved Final Fantasy VII remake, but uh, mm. yeah, I do want them to do something a little different to make the combat feel a little more. Um, if they're gonna do action combat, a little more like an action game, like a lot of the. I mean, even Near, which is their property, um, I think has better combat. So Near's combat's awesome. Yeah. I remember not even knowing anything about. Uh, automata uh and then playing the demo of it without knowing shit about it as soon as i playing i was like what the fuck is this yeah and i was instantly just hooked because the gameplay was so fucking good yeah so um, um yeah i mean even if it's somewhere in the middle because like we know the the devil may cry director or combat director um directing the combat for this as well um but it's still gonna be a final fantasy game so like you know gotta find a, a, balance a, a good the marriage two. of the two hopefully mm-hmm. So, um, and we talked about this earlier. Um, I'm hoping that they will not make it. I want it to be more Final Fantasy than Devil May Cry. Yeah, me too. I just hope that the smoothness of combat is what translates from sure, that sure, sure. Well, yeah, I, want, I don't want it to. I actually don't want it to feel like anything. I want it to feel like its own game. But, um, well, that's that's something that Square Enix has been making these like um, these action rpgs lately that uh that have a similar thing going on but they all feel different yeah and so i so far they've been doing a good job on making like 15 feel different than final fantasy 7 remake even though they're both just like active in their in their combat Mm -hmm. um i do like the mix of like fighting and then going into a menu and deciding things it gives you a nice mix of the two um and so I do agree that I don't want this to just feel like seven or fifteen in its combat, but um, I also don't want it to just be like a full-on like action game either. I want it to have some kind of element of like RPG. Sure, I agree with that. Yeah, because otherwise I'm just playing an action game, and that's not what I want from uh, Square Enix or a Final Fantasy. Well, I agree, but we'll see. The way they they constantly talk about the the future of role-playing games. Um, they don't seem to think that slower paced games are, are what people want, so we'll see how that goes. So I would strip take it turn based. They make RPG that with bravely yeah. default. Yeah, but, but like a like a triple A turn based game I would totally play. Yeah. I mean I would too, but I, I think I think when they're looking at you know, whatever information they're looking at, they're not seeing that. So. Most amount of people possible who will play the game. Yeah. Without completely selling their, their soul. Yeah. So um, but otherwise, which yeah. Is, which is a hard thing to balance, so I get it. Um, I think that's all I got. 
Yeah, I already touched on the uh, clunkiness, and uh, I mean, I agree. You watched us talk about it too. Uh, Resident Evil 4 uh, remake is looking sick for sure. Um, 16, yeah, it was looking great, and that trailer was really good. Really um, good. <laughs> I, I was, I was pretty into it. Um, 15, yeah, it was definitely a mess in its development. I think it was a mess in some ways as well, but I did end up leaving that game uh, loving it. So, and I think the villain was really good in it, um, which I wasn't expecting. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see in terms of gameplay and build upon that will be great. Yeah, I think uh, you know to to emphasize what you've just said, build upon it. Mm. That's what I want from it as well because I think they do got a really good system in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, and uh, the gameplay is really good. Game looks great, but yeah, we just need to see some evolution because I don't want to see, you know, for a while there with JRPGs, they were all turn based. They all had the menus, and everyone everyone's doing their own little things there to kind of change it up. And some people weren't, and those are the games you kind of forgot about. So um, they definitely got to bring something new to the table, but uh, also you got to balance it out, and you don't want to you know fix what's not broken. So if uh, things are working out well. Um, just evolve it. So hopefully they're they're able to do that. But uh, pretty much I agree with everything you said. So yeah. Anything else? Thank you for the comment, Tom. And uh, yeah, we got a comment from Ego Border saying, "Great episode, guys. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to chime in on the FPS topic. I want to give Gotham Knights the benefit of the doubt that overall devs decided 30 frames per second." Uh, better complements the online drop-in co-op as well as presentation. But it should be said that when people defend 30 frames per second, they often defend, they're often they often defending as low as 19 frames per second. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a fair distinction because, yeah, um, they hear the 30 frames per second and when the game's running the best, you know, they're defending that aspect, but they're also defending that, uh, you know, sometimes it does drop pretty fucking and low comps, and yeah. uh, that's not acceptable. So, um, you know, 30 frames per second, I think, is the lowest that I think is even playable. Below 30, the game's lagging, in my opinion. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, I would hope it wouldn't drop below that. And uh, some people are kind of overlooking that. So I agree with that for sure. Continuing, uh, I can't think of a better example than Bloodborne, a bona fide uh, masterpiece which many fans would kill to downgrade to 720p, 60 frames per second. I think it's fair. Um, as a huge Bloodborne fan myself, um, I think it's wild. We don't have a 60 frames per second version of that game because it's so good already and it could only be better with better frames per second because the game fucking deserves that. And yeah, I might take a lower resolution to Cause achieve that because the gameplay is more important, especially in a game that's high challenge, high reward. Um, gameplay is more important than the way the game looks, although that game looks fucking beautiful. We need... A, a, a remaster or a remake from the ground up that runs at 60 frames per second. And blown away that um, Sony just doesn't really like the idea of making money off this game because, like, the it is wild. The, the fact that uh, people have been screaming for just a PC port, not even an up res or a higher frame, just a port of the game, and they won't even do that. So. People, people want a PC port, which would be easy to do. People want a 60 frames per second uh, update to the the base game. Yep, just brought up to the, um, the modern consoles or whatever. Which on like a PS5 would not be even an issue. Yeah. People want a fucking sequel and they will buy the shit out of that sequel. People want a remaster or remake. I mean like the 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 future of Bloodborne is is very viable. It's there. Um, and everybody always brings up, well, well Sony owns owns it. So it's up to Sony. It's like yeah, I mean, you're 100% right. It's wild. Yeah. Whoever the fuck can give the, the green light on this is just going like, we don't want to make money. Yeah, That's the decision that they're actively making when they don't do anything with Bloodborne is they're just like, we don't feel like making money. Yeah, I mean, it's the same as if they don't make a, a second uh, Sekiro. That's basically Activision going, we don't want another one because yeah. it's their game. Even though it's it's especially, from game, but especially all the clamoring for Bloodborne, anything from it, whether it's six frames per yeah. second or whatever, and then they had to have heard it, and okay. then and that was happening before Elden Ring, and then the success of Elden Ring, yeah, it's like what are you what are we fucking doing? Especially if that's just like a Sony game, Bloodborne, what a great game to be like. This is ours. This yeah. isn't like everybody's. You should be 
fucking doing something with that. Yeah. It's wild. Other than just keeping the servers on. I think the servers are still on. I think so. so I which think is so. crazy. Cause that's a P- isn't that a PS3 game? <laughs> when did Bloodborne come out? Maybe it's PS4. I don't know. I think it's a PS4 game. <laughs> It's, I was like, wait, is it that old? Maybe it's PS4. I don't know. Anyways, it's an old game at this point, though, either way. Mm. And uh, other Souls games have had their servers shut off. So, like, it's kind of wild. I, but Sony probably owns the servers, so we'll see. It's a PS4 game. Is it PS4? I, yeah, I, 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 you had me down myself. I'm like, is it that old? I can't some, remember. Because so. certain games came out on PS3 and they're still re-releasing them. So yeah. it's just like, fucking, I don't even know anymore. Well, regardless, if it is PS4, I, it was probably earlier PS4 then. I don't even remember at this point. So, but either but way, yeah. um, I feel like you know Sony knows they have to know. I it's like I see it all the time. Yeah, and I'm not. It's even a fucking. Looking at it's a meme on Twitter. Yeah, it like so. it will trend, yeah. like Bloodborne. It's just like again, it's like the it's the biggest meme on the internet when it comes to gaming. We'll see. Yeah. They'll do something with it eventually. I find it uh, very unlikely that they'll just ignore it forever. But Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways. One, one thing I want to add, though, that has been really interesting since uh, doing this episode and having the conversation with random people about uh, frames per second and what's acceptable is I, th- I think the mass majority of people want 60 frames per second. I think it's completely fine to want that because it's been done by a lot of games at this point. And games that look really fucking good can do it. Um, obviously, you know, all devs are not created the same. Um, I think 30 frames per second is acceptable. I don't think it's like you're getting ripped off, but there is a standard people expect at this point. And I think if you want 30 frames per second, that's fine. Uh, I already went over this in the last episode. But um, I, th- I also think there's early in this in this current generation, we were shown that you could have uh fidelity mode and, and performance mode i think a lot of people got in their head that this is where things are going you can choose better graphics or better performance and so when a game comes out now that doesn't offer that now it's not even just the fps that's like taking a step back for them i think it's not having the options the basic options that like a pc player would have since the beginning of time you'd be able to change things up to have it look better or play better um but uh so i think i i've been hearing a lot of people express that they just wanted the option in gotham knights to decide if they want to play at 30 frames per second or drop graphics and get better frame rates or if they're not playing with a friend yeah playing single player to be able to increase that because i get the argument of like look the game doesn't run that great with two people doing their own things across the map or whatever we have to drop it down I, I could understand that. Mm. But that there is no options or variability is really interesting. For sure. It's not even a criticism. It's just it's just an interesting thing to look at. So, But I think you make a really good point. And I do think uh, there's a lot of room for that discussion to go in a lot of directions. But also, um, yeah, people are defending that as well. Um, and yeah, I agree with the Bloodborne thing for sure. But we already went over that. So, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I mean, you could pretty much covered it. Um, you know, choices are good. I think the same thing could be said about, um, you know, I, I've seen people for some reason uh, dismiss 1080p as if it shouldn't be an option anymore. And I completely disagree since most people still run 1080p. So uh, a lot of people for sure still do. Yeah. Well, I think with Steam statistics, when they, because they do the hardware survey like quarterly or whatever, um, the vast majority of people are still running 1080p displays. So. Yeah, on PC for sure. Yeah, I I've never even humored a 4K screen for my PC, which is funny. I'm <laughs> like I feel yeah, I'm currently, lo- like, considering a 1440. Display. Yeah, not 4K, because performance is more important than graphics to me. Yeah, I feel like console gamers probably care more about that. Probably, but also when you're buying, you're not buying a monitor for console gaming. You're buying a TV. We're, we're talking about, in some cases. Same people who look at teraflops though, and and use that as a, a buying point. So. Yeah, but when you have like a big screen, you're buying like the the TV for your house for the family, whatever. 4K on a bigger resolution is gonna look sharper. Sure. Than a smaller screen, so it makes sense. And then you know if you're 
console gaming, you're probably not thinking about like not saying people on consoles aren't thinking about like specs, but like a lot of console gamers that I know personally just want to buy the box, fucking play the game. Sit on the couch and play games. Sure. Yeah. And so you're probably more inclined to go like when you buy a TV too, and there's nothing wrong with their 4K is the, is the standard. It should be at least. Um, for a lot of people when it comes to like their TVs, they probably go into a store and they're like, fucking give me the 4K TV. Yeah. I want the better resolution. Um, and so, yeah, it's probably more people on 4K with consoles. I don't know a whole lot of people are gaming on 1080p TVs, but uh, yeah. it is interesting to bring up the Steam thing because, like, I have an ultra wide, but this ain't 4K. Same with mine, yeah. Yeah. Um, and most people I know aren't on 4K monitors. Mm-hmm. So, no, frames, frames are more important than resolution, I think. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people who, uh, you know, the difference between 1080p and 4K isn't that, like, big of a jump for them. But the difference between 30 and 60 frames. Well, especially on like or 120 on like, <laughs> I mean, I got like an ultra wide, but like some people have like smaller monitors than I do. And on a smaller monitor, you don't, you don't really need the 4k. You're not going to actually get 4k. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's just the more compressed. It's like yeah. the steam deck gets away with the way it looks. Cause the screen's so fucking small. Yeah. The same with the switch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know. We could talk about that for days. There's a whole, that's a whole different conversation but yeah it's interesting yeah. and obviously you know there's going to be people who disagree because they have their own preferences but i think yeah. the vast majority of people don't actually care that much so but Probably people not. are vocal when they're upset so true it's very <laughs> true you should be vocal when you're stoked dude you should vocal be about that too um yeah that's all i got Thanks for the comment, Ego Border. Thanks for joining the conversation and adding to it. Thank you, everybody who commented. And a reminder that if you want your comment read for sure, type in hashtag AskTLG. Otherwise, I read it random. But that's going to do it for this episode of TasteCast, episode 176. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Uh, check out our... Uh, uh, Oh, God. Uh, streaming links and our socials linked down below. Uh, check out our Discord link down below. You can talk to us anytime, all the time. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. If you prefer to listen to us, check out my TikTok. It's linked down below. I do uh, shorts over there, and I would like to put those on YouTube, but YouTube will not let me yet. Um, Which I don't understand, but maybe after the I don't go through. I don't either. It's really fucking stupid. Yeah. Um, because I would love to just throw those on here now. Um, and we have a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, more than liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing if you're brand new. And yeah, I've been South. This has been Chevy. Thank you, Chevy, for joining me. Thank you guys for joining us. Until the next episode, have a good one, guys, and take it easy. Bye.